Hello, I'm Lisa Dragona. Thank you so much for joining me again. In the last video, I offered an example of personal power in action. And in this video, I would like to offer a more personal ex example for my salary history. Um, so stay tuned. In this episode, I'm going to be transparent about my salary history. Um, and I have many reasons for wanting to do this, even though it makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I am a child of this environment. So first of all, I do want to join others in this, in, in normalizing us talking and sharing information about our pay arrangements and um, the options available to us in our benefits because I think one of the reasons that the male, female, black, white, gender um, pay, pay gap exists is because people don't know. Like, some people are coming into the workforce without really having any, uh, any role models, any support, any mentors, right? We talk about first, first generation children, right? Who is providing those people with the information about what the pay structure is. And even with career uh, programs, much of that is very, um, yes, research salary. When you go in for a job interview, just have a ballpark, research and understand what your general salary range is for that role. Okay, that's very different. And I think that research is important, but it's very different than having somebody sit down and say, you know, so this is kind of what I get for base. This is what I get in bonuses. This is what I get in benefits. These are the type of benefits. If there are any stock options, that's available. And at no point do you really get that unless you have somebody to show you and talk you through that. And so one of the reasons that I think some of the pay equity exists is simply because people don't know. And so we can't overcome that unless we begin ourselves to normalize talking about what those arrangements are um, and it really hurts us as people um, it hurts our our ability to um, connect and create strong teams because you get a sense that you know Joe Schmo is getting way more than I am and we're doing the exact same job you get that sense and so there's this this undercurrent that builds up um, and it really allows us to shine a light on and make personal, make tangible, and make put a face on this pay equity conversation. Because it, when we talk about the glass ceiling, it's this abstract thing that, okay, where are we looking for it? No, make it personal, like put a face on it. Um, so then secondly, I think my story demonstrates that it is possible to overcome limitations that contribute to specifically black women getting paid significantly less than white male counterparts in the US especially. And now, one of the things that I really love is I love statistics and so I look at salary statistics and you know information about pay equity. But even though I look at that, what I always tell myself is I'm not a statistic. You are not a statistic. When you tap into your personal power, you can find ways to break the mold, period. I do want to kind of forewarn you that this episode is going to be a little long, but stick around because at the end, I'm going to offer two ingredients that I think are indispensable to anchor in your personal power. And with that, here we go. So. Over the last nine years, from 2012 to 2021, I increased my base salary by 160% cumulatively from about 35000 to 90000 And to put that in context, if I had taken or if he had taken $10,000 and invested it in the S&P 500 index for 10, those nine years and had done nothing else, just invested it in 2012, you would be at about 33,000, which would be about 200, 230% growth over time. And then according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average salary of a 25 to 34 year old in the year 2020 was 48,000. 
Now, my biggest jumps in salary have come from changing jobs or companies. And often that comes when I kind of re reach a dead end where there is, there is no way forward internally. For example, while I was in DC, when I was still relatively new in the organization, two managers left. And this left a vacuum of tasks that needed to be done in order for us to provide our services effectively um, and efficiently. So I just stepped up and started doing some of that. Um, it wasn't it wasn't really calculated. The situation was what it was and it called for it. And I responded because I care deeply for the service that we were providing. And as a program analyst, I was technically the lowest position, lowest ranked person in the organization. I worked closely with 13 social workers and two case managers. Many of them would come to me in near tears, frustrated because they had tried everything in their power to get their client's case through the system. On top of that, they worked directly with the clients and their families, and so they had to provide emotional support to these families and clients as well, while also dealing with service providers who were sometimes unreliable. So I saw, I felt, and I sat with them in their pain and frustration. And while I didn't have any real external cloaks of power, no title, no position, no authority, not even years of experience, I recognized that I had the power to amplify their voice, to let people know what was happening. So I made it my job to compile the information about their cases, analyze what was happening to identify where the bottlenecks were in the system, and at every single opportunity that I had to speak with somebody who I knew was in proximity to somebody who had their authority, or if I happened to have the opportunity to speak to that person directly, I had to overcome this fear of stepping out of line to present the information I had gathered and offer recommendations based on what was working. So seeing the frustration, pain, and suffering that the system design was causing to the social workers, to the case managers, to the clients, I found the courage to speak up in hope and in faith that we could absolutely do better. Through these efforts, everyone, eventually everyone in the organization kind of knew that I was successfully doing the work of a manager um, while I was an analyst, and everybody knew that my pay didn't reflect that contribution, which is why I had letters of recommendation for my boss and my organization's executive director supporting the application that would have reclassified me and made me eligible for a significant pay bump and a title change. Now, nearly for nearly two years, I knew meetings were being held and phone calls were being made by people championing my application. So for the most part, I remained still and continue to do great work. Sometimes, when I thought about it too much, I had to fight that feeling of frustrated hopelessness that came over me and really would sap my energy. And when I realized things had gone on for a while and I wasn't really seeing any progress, I began to apply to other organizations, not because I really wanted to leave the organization, I really loved the work that I was doing. What I wanted to do was create leverage for the, in support of the application that I had submitted. So when I got the offer, I brought it back to the organization and presented it to them and to, to demonstrate that what we were asking for internally was in line with market rates. But still, HR didn't bend. And at this point, I and the people who were supporting my application knew that we had done all we could do. And with great sadness and gratitude, we went our separate ways. And that remains one of the best jobs I have ever had. And the whole experience helped me see the value of my contribution. Now, after that saga, you can understand why when we moved to Dallas, I declared that I was not going to accept a position that paid less than what I was earning in DC. I had gone through too much and I was not going back. 
And even though when I when we moved, I ha did not have any applications submitted, did not have any interviews lined up, the transition was really seamless. And I believe one of the reasons for that was because of that experience, my salary requirements were really clear and I had more confidence and certainty about what I brought to the table, which allowed me to narrow my search and only to be with those opportunities that had the potential to meet those requirements that I had. I also want to acknowledge that I was fortunate to meet people who had the capacity to open doors that made that possible. And I'm so grateful for them and to them to this day. Now, my purpose in any job has been to be exceptional, contributing my best to those around me, be it team members, customers, bosses. My goal has always been to make things easier, the environment better for people, and leave things better than I found them. The values that allowed me to stand firm in my requests were valuing my skills and talents and the contribution that that allowed me to make. Embracing negotiation as a collaborative effort and valuing myself and standing fast on my non-negotiables. Now, I want to tie this example to the previous example about how my first boss founded his company and in the process created something that didn't really exist in his experience, right? So like my salary increase didn't, wasn't possible in that organization. That wasn't in that reality that I was in. My ability to move from one grade, a grade level, salary level to another was actually on policy, not possible, which is why you know, that, that was close to me. But it doesn't mean that it was impossible, right? As exemplified by the offer letter that I got outside, right? So with these two examples, there are two important threads to make that make up personal power. I said that personal power deals with possibilities. To tap into your personal power then, you must believe and trust that these possibilities exist and are out there even if you don't have evidence of them in your current reality. So faith and trust are key to tapping to your personal, tapping into your personal power. Faith and trust in that things are possible. Faith and trust that opportunities will materialize. Faith and trust that you will land on your feet by continuing to move forward in alignment with your purpose and values and doing those things that are within your control. Always, always focusing on what can I do now? What can I do now in this moment? It might feel like things are out of your hands, but what can I do now? And faith and trust in your God-given capabilities, the universe, the life force, given like these are capabilities that are given to you. Gratis, free. There are capabilities that are within you that no one can take away from you. They may be undeveloped. They may be weak from lack of use, but they are there waiting to be strengthened through practice. For example, you have the capability to observe patterns in the environment you are in. You have the capability to learn from these patterns. You have the capability to discern and problem solve based on what you are observing, the patterns that you're noticing, right? And when you activate and sharpen these capabilities, you develop your capacity to make wise decisions as you navigate through any turbulent waters. I think one of the biggest barriers to tapping into personal power sometimes is we don't trust ourselves to make decisions about our own lives. And if you don't trust yourself, you are doomed. By not trusting yourself, you are effectively looking for somebody else to save you. And God knows there are plenty of people who are ready to step in and deprive you of your power and limit what is available to you. You claim your power by getting clear on your ideal, getting clear about your purpose and your values, then with faith and trust, remain receptive 
to the possibilities that are coming to you and continuing to do those things that are within your control every single day. So to close, I encourage you to continue to find 10 minutes a day of pure silence to ponder and write down your thoughts for the two reflection questions shared in the last video. I'd love to receive any insights that you have and I am working on an episode that actually pulls in some career tips based on this and other stories. Um, so keep an eye out on that. And if you know anyone that could benefit from stepping into their full power, please share this with them. And as always, thank you so much in solidarity.